Hello and welcome guys to another session in the Mind Grid. Today's topic is CRC32 and use of tables and how the table structures work and how they can be made more efficient by um, scaling to higher speeds, mostly from a digital perspective, from an FPGA ASIC perspective. But it may be useful to see these tricks even from a software standpoint um, because it helps you understand how the CRC underneath the covers really works. And before we get into the details, um, I would like you guys to subscribe to my channel and like, uh, I guess later on, but uh, I would like you to um, subscribe to my channel if you have been here for a while and if you like my content, please do subscribe. It really helps me out. So with that, I guess let's dive into a little bit of um, the logic behind how the CRC tables work. If you just look at the CRC32 equation, which is the standard Ethernet IEEE equation. You can see the equations highlighted right here. And when you uh, write this equation in terms of bits, you can convert this into a 33-bit equation, which is the 33-bit is always set to 1 in every case. And, uh, and then a bunch of bits are set to zeros and ones accordingly based on this um, specific equation. Now, um, I will show you later on that there is a way to think of this 33-bit equation as a 32-bit equation when we think about CRC. This bit kind of is very little of little relevance, so we could drop this bit, and I'll show you that in, a, in my program how we can do that. Overall, though, this is what you're working with, and in terms of CRC, it's kind of like a divisor to uh, a data pattern or a message that's coming in. That's usually how we think about it. Um, and the other thing is that the math behind this CRC, usually what we'll end up using is very simple math. Um, because the CRC computation is not done in a pure, you know, the standard um, arithmetic, it's done in something called as a Galois field. In the Galois field, XOR is kind of um, the same as addition or subtraction operation. And therefore, you will see that just simple XOR um, not adders are used in the computation. So that's another um, important fact. The third thing we'll end up using is because of all these properties, CRC of some number XORed with another number. So X XOR Y is the same as CRC of X XORed with CRC of Y. As long as you follow this, this property, CRC has this interesting property. Right, so we'll use that. Now, what we are trying to do is show you that we'll try using um, a standard message, um, A, the first alphabet, A, and we're gonna feed that. And you can try this in like, use chat GPT or some software and ask it, what is the CRC, standard Ethernet CRC of A? And you will get the answer is E8, B7, BE43. And so we're just gonna prove that we are getting this. And if we get this, then we know that whatever we are doing is correct, right? One of the th important things to note is that when you feed A, A actually is the 6-1 ASCII character, 6-1 in, in binary digits, but it's fed into the CRC bit flipped. So every byte is bit flipped before it's fed into the CRC generator. And then the bits are fed in the reverse order, which is LSB lower lower order bit first. Okay, so having said all of these, now let's look at how the CRC actually functions. So at the top here, what we will have is the CRC register, which is initialized to all ones. So it's a 32-bit register initialized to all ones. And then because we are going to feed a message of size eight, we have to put extra eight bits of zeros here. And if your message is 16 bits and so on and so forth, then you just have to pad those many bits as you feed those bits in because the division just slides. It's like a sliding window when division, in this case, because the Galois field is XOR, but all that will just slide through. Now data, as we said in the previous slide, it's going to look like this. Um, and we already talked about the fact that this is 61, but it's like um, little endian format. So two important things we've already seen, CRC is initialized to all ones, and the data is, um, bit reversed, and then once you feed that data, what you have to do is that the upper bit, 
when you XOR, so first thing is you, you slide this data where is the, the highest bit of the data aligns with the highest bit of the CRC, and then you XOR them, right? And once you've XOR this data, then you can basically operate on this, this value. And so the thing is, because this XOR is zero, then this means that we don't need to do anything. We just have to shift it. So we just shift out this bit and start looking at the next 32 bits, right? So that's what we'll do. Now, when you look at that, um, so you basically now have to keep dividing till you have fully consumed the eight bits. Now you've just consumed one bit here. Next, we move on to the next bit. So, so the next bit in this case, once you've shifted is also a one. When you have a one in this MSB position, what you have to do is you have to XOR with this polynomial that we had found in this first slide. Now I told you that it is possible to do a 32-bit division instead of 33. In this case, I'm showing you a 33-bit division. And so the full polynomial is written down here. So let's just do that. And I'll show you later on that because this is, you could assume if this was a one and you're gonna XOR, you could just throw this out and XOR with the remaining bits, right? So you could convert this 33 bit into a 32 bit. So this is your division polynomial and we just write it down from this position. We XOR it again and then whatever bit we have used, we throw it away. And then we start looking at the next bit and notice how we are sliding these zeros back in as we, just like a regular division, we're just copying those zeros down as we move. And so the next step is the same. We just look at that, that bit is gone. So now we have consumed two bits. The third bit, we write down it's a one. So we again XOR the polynomial. Once we XOR, we get this data. And then we, um, once we've XORed, then we throw away the MSB again, look at the next bit and so on and so forth. And if you keep doing this all the way, you will reach a point where, you know, after this final XOR, um, it's basically all the MSBs are zero. And so, um, Let's see how many times we did. We did one polynomial, second polynomial XOR, third, and then fourth. By the fourth polynomial, we've got all zeros. So we just basically just slide over, right? And you just bring in zeros. And every time you bring in zeros, it just basically just remains um, to be the same number. So you end up getting these 32 bits here. You don't have to XOR again because every time you XOR, you know that you're gonna get back the same value because the, if the MSBs were all zeros, then it produces no effect because there's no XOR. So given that, we now have gotten this answer. And then the final step is to basically get your 32 bits here and then invert them, right? And so you invert every bit and then you reflect it, which means that the, the MSB here, LSB becomes the MSB and so on and so forth. So you end up getting this E8B7BE43, which is exactly what we expected to get. So now we have understood how the CRC starts off by XORing the data with the CRC at the MSB position, just looking at the eight bits of data, right? Now, here's where the interesting observation starts, which is the CRC of X, XOR, Y. So now, if you go back to look at what we operate on is this XOR, right? Which is data XOR with CRC's initial state, gives you this value, and now we operate on this value. So the observation right off the bat is that I could have independently done this whole polynomial business on just the CRC and independently on just the data and then XOR them together. And that would have produced the same effect as if this XOR value of this and this, right? And you can assume here they're the same length because you could pad this with zeros here. It's the same thing. So, um, so in a way, CRC, um, which is XOR version of CRC uh, value and the data, which becomes this as the starting point for this whole calculation, can be seen as you know CRC computed over just this value and CRC computed over just this value and then XOR together, right? So I think that's kind of what we want to get and prove here in our code here that that's something that we can do. And that's essentially the way to accelerate this um, is that we can compute um, CRC by itself and data by itself and then XOR them together. And this is a basis for an algorithm that can be implemented in hardware where you don't have to XOR these values. You can independently produce the values for each byte line and independently produce the value of CRC for the CRC function itself 
for however many bits you're trying to process and then in the end just XOR all of them together right so that's the motivation now here I'm going to jump into my code here and so explain the code for a second so in this code what's happened is that you know we have this CRC init value which is FFFFF 32 bits of F and the data which is 86000 which is what we fed is A character A ASCII A and the CRC data when you XOR these two values becomes this 79 FFFFF and so on right so the question here is that we're going to compute the result two ways one is CRC um, with just the init value the other with the data and the third with the CRC data and then Basically, we will just XOR these two, which is just the CRC by itself and just the data, and we XOR them. And then we do a separate one where we take the CRC XORed value here of the input XORed, right? So we are just trying to prove the CRC of A XOR B is equal to CRC of A XOR CRC of B, right? So when we run this, um, let's just run this. So if I run this and CRC.py, you will see that they end up producing the same value. And now this value guaranteed is not the same as the final result because remember that we have to do those, uh, you know, invert the the whole 32-bit um, data and then do the bit swap. We haven't done all of that, but that's just a fixed operation and it'll produce the same value. But the point is that when we compute the um, data um, using this method that we get, you know, CRC of A, X or B is the same as CRC of A XOR CRC of B which is if you go back to the presentation then that is the equation here right so this equation here um, is essentially what we have proven that that is true and it kind of if you go back here and you spend a little bit time looking at this it essentially is telling you that the operations that we are doing here really don't care if we XOR these first or we did them independently and XOR the result, right? Because if you XOR um, the equation once for this and once for this, they will cancel themselves out, which is exactly what's happening here. So that essence is the, the main idea behind this um, CRC speed up. And this, I call this a speed up because when you can compute things in parallel and at the final step combine them together, then you can use that in, in various algorithms and um, right, instead of combining first and then computing, it takes more time, you can just do fixed operations on your data and your CRC and then XOR them together and produce the result, which is kind of shown here as well, that if it was CRC AX or BX or C, it's CRC AX or B, CRC X or CRC C, so, so on and so forth. And it can be implemented where you can break down a data into smaller parts and uh, CRC over each and then finally XOR the final result. So in a sense, the use of Galois fields and the CRC operation is done in such a way that the function behaves and has these properties. And this can be exploited to improve the algorithms that we have. And so um, we come to the end of this presentation. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel. Like I said before, this really helps me out. And it also shows me that if you're liking it, that I need to make um, content just like this. And I'll keep coming back with more videos like this in the future. But anyway, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in another video. Take care and bye-bye.